okay good day everyone we are on our 27th session of the learning basic arthroscopy series of lectures today we have a very very important topic that is revision acl reconstruction we are getting more and more revision acls one thing is possibly because of the learning higher learning curve of previously uh, i mean uh, the techniques have been not so great previously and the techniques are improving a lot nowadays and also more and more people want to get into uh, professional sports or uh, recreational sports so we see a lot of uh, revision uh, re-injury in a lot of patients so revision acl reconstruction is something that everyone at least in the near future have to know a lot about so we have dr mopati dr srinivas good evening good evening, be... good evening. Good evening. Um, i request dr srinivas to introduce dr mopati okay thank you i'll just uh, one minute good evening everybody uh, today we have uh, the speaker dr srinivas moparthi he is a consultant orthopedic surgeon and managing director of nandan hospitals at uh, vijayawada in andhra pradesh uh, he did his ms orthopedics uh, from rajiv gandhi university of health sciences in bangalore and uh, completed fellowship uh, and completed fellowships in arthroscopy and pelvic trauma in kiel germany under professor c camp and lucerne uh, switzerland under professor babst Uh, he is a member of Indian Orthopedic and Arthroscopic Associations, SICOT, ISACOS, and ESCA, and uh, he has been faculty in basic uh, AO courses and has conducted uh, Kaminani Arthroscopy course in 2015. And he is also in the regional faculty in the state conference, uh, also called OSAPCOM, uh, for every year since 2016. and this year is one of the organizing secretaries of that conference in the state uh, he is a busy practitioner and was one of the first to start meniscal repairs in pelvic osteovascular trauma in his region welcome uh, dr shrinivas moparthi thank you thank you shrino thank you uh, thank you for accepting our invite uh, i'll hand over to you sesi to introduce professor martinek yes can yeah Okay, thank you, Doctor Shini. Was please let me introduce Doctor Professor Martinik. Professor Martinik is a specialist in orthopedics and trauma surgery, and he is head of the department of Joint Center at Schoen Clinic, Bad Ebel in Germany. He is a very busy practitioner. Uh, his practice involves arthroscopy and arthroplasty of the knee, shoulder, and hip. Thank you, Doctor Martinik. for uh, coming over in a short notice all all the time being busy also he has landed directly from the operation theater and uh, we had to uh, it was very important for us to wait a couple of minutes for him to join us there are a lot of uh, uh, people uh, a lot of my friends who have done fellowship with dr martinik is um uh, at shawn clinic we welcome dr martinik for joining us and agreeing to share your knowledge with us you are welcome good evening good okay. evening dr martinik good evening over to dr shrinivas mopati please share your screen good evening uh, everyone uh, let's uh, let's start session yes please good evening uh, first of all i want to thank you uh, dr shashi and dr srinivas for giving me this opportunity i am very pleased uh, for professor marchnik joining uh, with me for this being a panelist main panelist uh, for joining for my session uh, in spite of busy schedule uh, good evening professor marchnik so the common problem with the uh, acl revision acl technique is nowadays is, is becoming um, emerging uh, procedures because most of the most of the primary acls uh, excuse me just one minute yeah yeah sorry uh, 
Uh, most of the ACL procedures uh, nowadays, the end surgeons are doing is a lot of the ACLs, primary ACL reconstructions they are going on. But the problem comes is uh, they face the problem is when they have a problem after the uh, primary ACL reconstruction. What happens is they will have some patients will have post-operative lax laxity or they will have some traumas or improper uh, uh, incorporation of the graft into the bone. So these are all the common problems uh, and stiffness and um, uh, joint instability. So these are all the problems that nowadays the end surgeons and uh, emerging surgeons are facing with the primary ACL reconstruction. Today, my topic is given is uh, revision ACL uh, techniques and its principles, when to do and when not to do. So there is, if you come to the definition, there is no universally accepted definition for the failure of uh, an ACL reconstruction because it is a multifactorial. It is not a single, there is no single definition. It may be considered to have failed when the objective elasticity or a patient perception of instability develops in a previously ACL reconstructed knee or when the post-operative pain or stiffness occurs in a stable reconstructed ACL reconstructed knee. University of Pittsburgh has given a classification system for the ACL, uh, ACL rupture. That is the technical errors. Technical errors comes to the surgeons, the, way, uh, the tunnels, how whether it is placed in the anatomical tunnels or non-anatomical tunnels. Second is trauma. The patient post-primary ACL reconstruction, patients again having a re-trauma, uh, that is uh, one of the rupture which uh, uh, primary ACL undergoes. Second thing is, uh, the third thing is the biological failure that is improper incorporation of the graft into the bone or any adjacent osteolysis by the implant. Next is the rehabilitation problem. Rehabilitation problem is one of the thing because uh, if the, if our uh, post rehabilitation programs is not good or if the patient goes early aggressive rehabilitation or our uh, constant physiotherapy doesn't have any knowledge how to uh, rehabilitate the primary ACL. So these are all the uh, four uh, factors uh, that Pittsburgh the classification system has given. The, that is the technical errors, trauma, biological failure, and the rehabilitation problem. Next coming is the etiological classification of failure of ACL that is given by the Johnson and Foo. These are the three primary clinical signs and symptoms that lead to consider an ACL reconstruction and failure. That is the one sense. In, first one is the instability of the, the primary uh, ACL reconstruction. Second is the joint stiffness that is a restriction of the movement. Next is a post-operative pain due to uh, infection or any associated conditions. So uh, the most one of the studies recently done by uh, the, uh, from the Swedish and uh, Norwegian and knee ligament registries, uh, they have done a core studies that is the 30,000 patients it was there was it was given in the knee surgery post traumatology that is in uh, 2019 that is march they told that uh, there is a high incidence of uh, revisions with the young age and high uh, body mass index bmi so if, if the patients if they are young to young age or skeletally mature patients the young age if they're going for uh, uh, primary acl reconstructions or with a high bmi the chances of going for the uh, revision ACL reconstruction. This is a course study given from the Swedish and Norwegian Development Registries based on 30,000 patients. Recently, it came in the General of uh, European General uh, Sports Traumatology in March 2018. How to prevent failures? Tunnel placements in order to prevent the failure of primary ACL. Generally, this topic is going on, the, uh, uh, but these are the, one of the causes uh, which gives to, uh, leads to failure of the primary ACL. There is a classification given by according to the Howell and Clock based on the, uh, the cable tunnels. Here you can see this is the dotted one, the white one, the dotted one, the white one, and the gray one. If the if your ACL uh, primary ACL reconstruction is done within this gray bar, that is a short bar. You can see here short bar. The posterior that is the posterior half of the ACL footprint that is excellent. If it is done in the longer bar, that is a white one is within that ACL footprint the, the acceptable. The, the, we can accept that. But if it is uh, done too anteriorly or too posteriorly, that is in, in the PCL zone, it's not acceptable. That is uh, the ACLs, those ACLs will fail. Post operatively, if you see this thing uh, on uh, AP views and lateral views, the tunnels uh, version should be seen. If you see this one, you 
should be in the uh, according to hall it should be in the correct footprint okay and it should be when you see in the lateral view uh, it should be in the uh, bloom sachs line so this is one of the inside in technique i kept for the uh, better view and judgment for the participants small position tibial tunnels if you do it uh, uh, to anterior it goes to notch impingement to posterior it goes to the pcl impingement classification of femoral tunnel entrance according to hornell et al if the if our primary acl uh, reconstruction is posterior and inferior the left circle you can see is the gray circle your results will be excellent we, we, if it is in white zone it can be acceptable that is beneath partly beneath the posterior quarter of the root line whereas if it is uh, in dark zone that is it's not acceptable the chances of failure and stiffness and uh, um, attrition of the graft this thing will be more in this here also same it will be should fall in the in the lateral view should fall in the bloom sachs line posteriorly inadequate notch plasty is one of the cause of the primary acl failure acl graft often larger than the native acl it needs a good clearance between the graft and roof of notch notch should be large enough to accommodate full rom if you do the inadequate notch plasty there will be impingement in extension there will be loss of extension and it can lead to graft attrition and formation of cyclops ligament over leg risk to notch plasty it may change its biomechanics so we should be very careful how much of notch plasty should be done sometimes it may be lateralize which can give to laxity of the graft also and there will be change in the femoral fixation point also to go with the aggressive notch plasty coming to the revision acl evaluation there is mri based we have to do it we have to evaluate what is the condition of the meniscus what is the condition of the cartilage and what are the condition of the other ligaments in a failed acl next comes this is a ct uh, to a computerized tomography it can determine the tunnel osteolysis or it can determine the tunnel diameters we can measure the tunnel diameters so that we can plan for the revision this thing the other one is a technician bone scan to rule out any associated infection or silent synovitis in the primary reconstructed acls ct based classification was uh, given by the robert and maxson he has given um, uh, this ct based classification based on the location of uh, uh, relative to the lateral intracondylar ridge the goals of the classification are both to provide a simple method for uh, describing the tunnel location on the femoral side and it will be very useful for for information on the revision surgery so that if your tunnel is uh, uh, for two posterior if it is in correct position you can you reuse the tunnel for the primary surgery the stage 1 reconstruction only you can go with that if it is uh, too anterior or in front of the or superior to the lateral intercondylar in vertical place or too anterior then the planning for the say, two stage reconstruction or the stage 1 reconstruction is the one thing important so type 1 is a inferior and posterior it's a well position we can reuse the tunnel if there is no that much of lysis the single stage procedure we can go with this uh, type 1 uh, type of tunnel because it will be posteriorly and it will be in the character that is below the posterior and inferior to the intracondylar ridge type 2 it is vertical there will be over overlapping the intracondylar ridge that is partly posterior and partly anterior but sometimes if you go with the stage single stage procedure there will be chances of the uh, convergence of the uh, tunnels will be there when we are, we are planning the other uh, tunnel so it's if it goes both vertical and slightly better two stage procedure is a is a better thing to do in this type 2 tunnel type 3 anterior mal position then we have to go for the two stage procedure because if you go for the single stage procedure if you go to the posterior there will be chances of convergence of the tunnels will be there and simultaneously there will be weakening of the bone and adjacent lysis of the uh, of tunnel also will be there in the, in the second stage of tunnel so imaging there is a one article with plain radiographs also we can do the imaging for the routine assessment of acl reconstruction in tunnel positions recently it was given in 2018 journal by jonathan david in the european uh, journal sports uh, traumatology Uh, in that they are given on plane radiographs also we can uh, uh, how to do the measuring whether it is uh, a tunnel failure is there or tunnel widening is there or not that is uh, on based on the ap and lateral view x rays 
is a, is a beautiful article. Uh, uh, the previous one is uh, of a CT base, whereas this one is a plain uh, X-ray base. Is a very good given by the Jonathan in the 2018. So surgical techniques, if it comes, is a single stage reconstruction or two stage reconstruction? Because single stage reconstruction has got uh, its own indications, whereas two stage in, uh, reconstruction has got its own indications. Graphs, there are so many graphs, that is patellar tendon bone graphs, hamstring graphs, you can use tendon actually, speroneus, yellow graphs, that depends on the surgeon choice. But the comparison of the graphs is yellow graphs versus the autographs. There is a study by the mass that is a multi-centered ACL revision study. The study was there and then found a higher retail rate and need for revision ACL reconstruction when patients undergo ACL reconstruction with yellow graft compared to the autograft, especially among the young athletes. That is the study that given mass study. The best choice for autograph in the revision ACL is still remains topic of debate as a PT bone tendon bone or patella bone tendon graft, either ipsilateral or contralateral. Uh, they can use the hamstring autograph, whether in the primary or if it is uh, only tunnel widening is very less, we can go with the, again with the use the hamstring graft or it's a cordyceps tendon graft. These are all the viable options. Again, the patient specific factors includes the occupation, what, which type of occupation patient is in, religious belief, that is Muslim patients, they have, have, uh, they have to do kneeling while well, the prayers and the pain in tolerance must come into play when going for the revision ACL reconstructions. Revision ACL reconstruction using quadriceps and hamstring autographs is least to, is, the results are same. It was a recent study done in 2019. After the four years, there is a objective stability is good, but coming to returning to the pre-injury level to sports level was a little bit inferior with both the graphs, that is with the quadriceps, that is a bone tendon bone, or with the hamstring autographs. So uh, the, the, there is no difference in uh, using uh, to say that, uh, but a bone tendon bone has got a superior results or a hamstring has got the inferior results. The results are the same. This is a recent, it is again given the European Arthroscopy in 2019 by Alexander. Single stage reconstruction. Indications that is a properly positioned tunnel with good bone stock is one thing. The tunnel should not be widened more than 10 mm. In that conditions we can use, but there should not be any adjacent lysis. So remove the hardware. Previously positioned tunnel, you can sometimes you can close it off or you can go for the other uh, tunnel. You can make a tunnel in anatomical position. It can, uh, if you want, we can go with the additional fixation. Uh, this uh, with the anchors or with the um, washers, uh, surgeon choice that depends. Steps: the graft selection is one thing. Removal of the hardware. Next is the revision notch plastic to see the how much of a notch uh, this thing is. There any impediment or attrition leading to the graft? The other one is a bone graft. So to, we can close the previous uh, tunnel with the bone graft. The next is the tunnel preparation and graft fixation. Graft fixation, again, it depends whether you want to go for the hybrid type of fixation or we can go with the screw fixation. That is a surgeon's choice again to stabilize the graft. Again, fusion notch plasty, we have to see. It eliminates the impingement and it uh, facilitates the correct tunnel placement. Then we should remove any adjacent osophytes, otherwise, again, it will uh, impact on the graft. And chances of uh, injuring the articular surface is high in a revision notch plasty. So we have to be very careful when we are doing the notch plasty in revision ACL reconstructions. Bone grafting in single stage procedure. Either we can use the uh, iliac crest uh, cortico cancellous bone grafts. As, uh, we can use uh, uh, in our scenario, Indian scenarios, we can use as a hollow mills. There will be different sizes of hollow mills. We can use the hollow mills on the uh, iliac crest. Yeah, it's easy, painless, uh, it's easy to take the graphs. Whereas in uh, patients' uh, affordability and this thing, or uh, based on the logistics, there will be special bone cutting tubes. We can use that too. There is other method of fixation. When you are fixing the uh, 
if it is near to our anatomical tunnel the previous tunnel is near to the anatomical tunnel we can do one thing we can fill that one with the bone graft that is anchoring uh, we can send the bone graft bone graft with the suture anchor and simultaneously we can drill the simultaneous anatomical tunnel and fix the graft so it will be dual purpose will be there so that the graft will be there simultaneously we can do the um, proper positioning of the graft into the tunnel coming to the two stage reconstruction if there is a tunnel widening there is any loss of range of motion or any associated active infection these are the indications for the two stage revision tunnel widening most common indication for the anterior cruciate ligament there is uh, some others recommend if the widening is more than 12 even whereas some suggest prefer is uh, if it is more than 14 mm Uh, we can go uh, 14 mm then we need a two stage but ideally is we have to see if it is more than 10 mm 10 mm is there and if there is an in between the tunnel if there is an uh, lysis in in between the tunnel then is better to go for a two stage the tunnel should be uh, parallelly in diameter should be equal from uh, starting from the proximal to the distal so in that condition we can go with the primary stage if there is any widening that is from the proximal to the distal of the tunnel each tunnel that is a femoral tunnel or the tibial tunnel if there is a widening in between because it happens with sometimes with the screw better is go for the two stage reconstruction next is uh, tunnel widening removal of acl stump and excess tissue and um, do the bone graft and stage 2 Uh, we we can do is uh, is uh, anterior cruciate ligament we, after uh, obtaining the ct or mri prior to surgery so to see uh, the tunnel fill because if you give the bone graft we have to wait for 4 to 6 months to go for the stage 2 procedure because the graft will get incorporated and we can do the procedure uh, the acl revision a is anterior cruciate ligament reconstruction like a primary acl with the basic principles If there is any loss of range of motion we have to consider two stage if there is more than 5 degrees loss of extension and more than 20 degrees loss of flexion in ne never do a revision acl in the bent knee gait because these are the cases uh, where the the revision acl or second phase next is the stiffening if there is any associated infection with the uh, adhesions and this thing complete removal of hardware and uh, try the uh, see any associated in infection then plan for a second stage a revision was the normal motion is obtained once the stiffness is gone after uh, doing a proper rehabilitation program if there is an active infection complete removal again antibiotics and make sure that your hematological value should be normal at least we should wait for the 6 months in uh, uh, any infective cases because uh, if you go uh, if you go by early there will be chances of re infection your hematological value crp and everything should be normal better to get the bone scan also again we can it will rule out whether there is any chances of infection sometimes this infective cases will go for a three stage procedures also because the what happens is uh, uh, there will be lysis of the screws and everything will be there because of lysis of the screws or the titanium material what we use what happens is there will be adjacent lysis of the tunnel so at that time we can't keep the bone graft also we have to wait for the infection to get dried up then we have to plan for the bone graft bone fill then we have to wait another 6 uh, months sometimes then we have to go for the again for the revision in anterior cruciate ligament reconstruction that is a one of the thing infections are the one of the worrisome for the uh, for thing for the surgeons in the revision acl reconstruction bone grafting in two stage same as uh, told uh, iliac twist bone graft the other one is the bone dowels this is uh, done by khadir he has told that you can go for a two stage revision acl anterior cruciate ligament using a uh, elo uh, graft or bone dowels just you can take from uh, iliac twist you can create a bone you can see here how this femoral tunnel what uh, this thing is in between the graft the cylindrical uh, uh, bone graft 
he made the tunnel he pushed that one inside slowly and he spilled up this one there be uh, these dowels are available but in india what we can do is with the iliac crest uh, you can make it with hollow mill you can push it with the hollow mill into that one and fill it and we can make it as a normal uh, bomb and we can uh, plan it uh, later stage after 6 months this is the one method how they will bond dowels is not available that much in india but in uh, uh, europe countries and uh, american countries the uh, bond dowels are available here we can use it uh, same method uh, you can uh, with hollow mill you can use uh, or iliac crest bond this is explained by khadir in one of his article for uh, two stage dowel this is a graph filled up till the graph filled after the six months four to six months which was seen on the ct scan then plan for the uh, new positioning it's a plan like a routine normal primary acl you can see here the the doll how it is is a mal position tunnel this is the original tunnel no again created you can see here this is the fixation choice again how you want to go that is the surgeon choice with the screw or with the endo button that is it surgical technique or uh, single bundle or double bundle technique because some surgeons prefer the single bundle technique or some surgeons prefer double bundle technique because double bundle technique is more uh, useful in uh, athletes whereas single bundle technique sudden segmentary type of uh, patients they are using the single bundle technique there is in uh, athletes and this thing they, they are using the double bundle technique that's according to surgeon choice there was a study in uh, swedish national ligament registry in 2017 double bundle anterior cruciate fixation is superior to single bundle fixation in terms of fusion frequency so this study was given they told is uh, is very results are very good with the double bundle reconstruction technique in revision series principles again same as primary acl reconstruction is a uh, once your uh, tunnels are uh, dried off in two stage procedure or if it is in primary stage you uh, want to do it in a single stage close off all the tunnels then you go follow the same principles like a uh, uh, primary acl reconstruction the anatomical tunnel placement and this if there is an adjacent uh, meniscus or anything Uh, plan the surgery according to that meniscus uh, whether to excise if it is in uh, red red zone if it is in uh, white white zone or red white zone or if it is in red zone plan for uh, freshening of the edges and go for the meniscal repairs or with the technique like outside in or inside inside in technique based on the patient uh, condition and the other things is associated ligaments if there is any associated mcl or lcr or posterolateral complex uh, deficiencies or anteromedial uh, posteromedial corner deficiencies based on that you can plan according to that take home messages it is critical to first identify the cause of failure just going directly for a revision reconstruction without knowing the cause is uh, results won't be that much good and no one must be comfortable with various graft choice the surgeon should be well versed with which graft will go it we thought we should not be pertain to only certain grafts but the studies are showing that the with any graft the results will be the same but somewhat the pre injury level uh, that is a uh, uh, pre injury level uh, there will be somewhat uh, won't they won't uh, return to the pre injury level this is uh, one of the latest articles we should be able to harvest the all the grafts that is a hamstring bone tendon bone and uh, quadriceps tendon grafts uh, tunnel placement is the most important thing in revisions also otherwise again there will be failure of uh, of uh, uh, your revision and anterior cruciate uh, ligament surgery and uh, it needs a lot of skill we should never feel uh, shy in taking the help of uh, colleagues or seniors who is a little bit experienced because our is a uh, continuous gaining knowledge today we may be masters but uh, after certain point of them someone will be the master so we should never feel shy in taking the help and thing because everyone have their own experience when you have got this type of problems the when our the primary acl are failed we can ask for the um support of our seniors who are little bit more versed uh, well versed with the procedures or well versed with the you know, subject we can ask them how to proceed in this 
uh, next you can use the ventromedial port because uh, there is some studies showing that the uh, doing the primary acl with the transtibial technique will have a less chances of revision compared than using the two portal that is ventromedial but in uh, whereas coming to the revisions they are telling is ventromedial portal it helps to redirect the tunnel placement in order to diverge from the original tunnel next is uh, as i told you the size of uh, uh, grafts size bone grafting it's varying with the surgeons to surgeons with others to other but we should see whether uh, uh, when to go for the bone graft here they say is 10 mm with more than 10 mm we can go it but some literature says is 12 mm some says is 14 mm but we should analyze that is proximal to distal if there is a tunnel is parallel there is no any ballooning of the tunnels in between we can use the additional fixation like with the post or anchor is a, is a, according to the surgeon choice there have been a, there was a one study a comparison of french norwegian and north american post studies that was published in 2015 there is uh, there is difference between the patient populations in revision uh, acl that is in france norway and north america the graft choice of um, both primary and revision acl surgeries and prevalence of uh, associated intraarticular pathology there are so much of studies were done between all these patients pertaining uh, so we should be careful in planning uh, uh, the revision acl surgery or when we are doing the primary anterior cruciate ligament surgery we have to rule out all the pathology whatever is there if there is any associated cartilage pathology or we have to get any associated meniscus pathology or any associated ligament injuries so these are very important things when we are going with this because some some areas the the surgeons we have some criteria to go for the acl surgery as in some areas the surgeons will have some their criteria so this is one of the demographics uh, shown in the acl revision comparison of french norwegian north american post studies return to sports is one of the debated issues following the revision acl reconstruction that is the timing of the sport, sport that depends again to surgeon choice if the patient is comfortable then this thing there is no level evidence exists to guide surgeons in setting a definite to term we miss at this time only uh, the patient should go for the uh, sports activities in revision it depends on the patient that is up to the surgeon choice to evaluate the patient who is good to return to his sports level that is one thing this is the uh, review given in the jbs uh, 2017 uh, there is also one of the good article when to return the patient to sports thank you Thank you, Herman, Doctor Shrinivas. Um, can you please stop your screen share? Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you, Herman, Doctor Shrinivas Mapathi. It was a beautiful presentation. I I think you covered most of the uh, principles that you have to follow for a revision ACL reconstruction. You did cover on the yeah. causes causes of failure. It was a This is one of the topic uh, which is burning issue because uh, here the again the things comes is some surgeons prefer the inside in technique or in, in revision ACL rather we can go for inside in techniques or we have to go for a hybrid fixation or we have to use the screws on both uh, both sides fixation of the graft again uh, the, this uh, goes like that is which implants we have to use which graft we have to use. which technique is the best method again these are things so revision acl we have to make it when we are going the knee for the revision acl we should make it as a normal knee and follow the principles of primary acl reconstruction then only it means if you want to go with again you can go with the inside in technique there were some papers are say showing in revision also you can go with the inside in technique then you can go with the hybrid fixation Either you can go with the screw, both sides screw screw fixations, or you can uh, 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 one side hybrid, one side screw, one side endo button loop. These are all these things, but make sure that there should not be any adjacent pathology. Next, coming yeah. to the graft again, also that is a one choice. Some say some surgeon says uh, I need I am very good. There be stony scores are very good with the bone tendon bone or patellar bone tendon bone. some says my surgeries are beautiful with uh, hamstrings that uh, 
hamstring contralateral hamstring grafts some says i am very good with the quadriceps tendon grafts so all these articles are there is only one thing is we should follow the principles again when you are going for revision of anterior cruciate ligament surgery means we should follow the principles of primary anterior cruciate ligament surgery same principles we should follow in revision also yeah i totally agree there are more questions yeah. than answers with respect to revision acl reconstruction um, but uh, we should know all the principles regarding the causes for the uh, rupture of acl um the graft choices that we have the uh, the knowledge of the previous tunnel position and uh, how we are going to plan the next i mean the ideal tunnel position now and uh, with respect to whether you want to do a single stage or a two stage revision this are all uh, things that uh, i mean a surgeon has to plan prior to planning our second i mean a revision acl reconstruction as you pointed out it is also very important to uh, assess the stiffness status so the joint the range of motion status have uh, be prepared with equipments um, there can be minor uh, variations in the equipments in addition to possible use of dowel if i mean otherwise uh, craft i'm sorry yeah sorry and uh, especially we should yeah. take the patient into confidence we should focus on the patient because the main problem comes in uh, the taking the patient to confidence that is one of the important we have to counsel the patient because sometimes in revision anterior cruciate ligament if you want to go for a two stage or sometimes a three stage when there is infection and this thing the patient can't wait that much for a long time this doctor is why this doctor is not doing any surgery why he is delaying because he did the mistake so that's why he is playing with my life like that but that is not the thing we should counsel the patient see you got the infection you have to do better let your bone get dry then we'll go for the surgery in between what we have to give is we have to give the hinge knee braces that is a weight uh, um, bearing braces we have to rehabilitate rehabilitate him we should not hamper his routine work we have to take him into the confidence which is the most important point and factor in doing the revision acl reconstruction because so many mistakes happens yes, yes, totally agree happens. it's not like totally that uh, every one is uh, god because yeah. sometimes happens because sometimes you won't get a proper logistics the company guys won't give sometimes proper logistics these are all these factors are some sometimes the patient jo uh, geometrically some will have a there were studies recently the more of the tibial slope has chances of high failure of anterior cruciate ligament there were studies given yep, in some yep, literature yep. yep. well, for that thing okay. and in some sports person what happens is uh, not like in routine normal person the ligaments will be a little bit st stiff they, when they are trauma only they will have injury but in sports athletes and this thing the ligaments will be lax their collagen tissue is changed completely it will be the when you compare to with the other knee uh, the <coughs> will lax a little bit so yeah. these are all these issues we have to take into consideration when we are treating the patient uh, a non athletic person and the athletic person these are uh, important things i think professor yeah. uh, uh, doc, uh, can you share the your experience with respect to revision acl reconstruction some general point that you would like to share subsequently i would like to ask a couple of questions my my recently now this is for dr martinik yeah for dr martinik yeah Thank you very much for the very nice presentation. It was really very nicely covered and uh, all those issues and uh, indeed, thank you. Thank ACL you. Revision is very complicated procedure. So uh, you all, you mentioned this point, but this is very important before you operate this operation, you need very, very good diagnostics. You have to know what is the reason for the failure. Was it a biological reason or was it a biomedical reason uh, beyond of trauma and, and stuff like this? But yeah, I think the most most common reason for uh, revisions are biomechanical reasons. So as you know, all of you know, and all our listeners know, that the ACLs has been performed not optimally for many years, for decades. And so we started like 10, 15 years ago to place them better, to place them more anatomically. So we know all those issues, high noon position and everything. So, so these are the patients many of them come now to our offices and, and require some, some revision. So it, it, you have to make this diag uh, diagnostic sorry, in analysis to, really, to be sure what is the reason. I think very 
complicated are the cases for of biological biological uh, um, uh, failure of the ACL because sometimes you don't know is it a low grade infection and yeah, there's some there are some some issues some, some studies about low grade infections we, we don't have the, the, the germs but there's the kind of a failure also also atro, atrofibrosis the same you know nobody knows why the patient uh, has got atrofibrosis um, sometimes it's kind of allergy sometimes it could be low grade sometimes it could be also for atrofibrosis a biomechanical problem so make good, uh, good uh, diagnostics, good analysis. And in my hands, in my hospital, we also perform CT. You know, you know sometimes uh, in, in less complicated cases, MRI would be enough. But you know, if you would like to see the defects and uh, position of the hardware, so a CT, computer tomography is, for me, is really a very, very important um, point before I start to perform ACL revisions. Uh, secondly, um, about the graft, it's the same. You mentioned don't use allografts much. I, I, I have been uh, for years with Freddie Poole in Pittsburgh, and, and uh, um, generally in the United States, allografts are used, but we, we don't use them, we don't get them um, very, very good. And uh, I think the biological, uh, biological. Um, healing of those allografts is not optimal. And especially in revision cases, you should avoid them. You did, you, you did mention it, that's, that's right. And um, in, in, as I was young, maybe in your age, I, we used both the and bone. And then we started to use hamstrings. And um, at the same time, there was quadriceps tendon. But quadriceps tendon was always in minority. And um, now 20 years later, uh, my favorite graft, also for revisions is our hamstrings. And my second graph is quadriceps tendon. And I, I try not to use patella tendon because um, as you probably know, I do also arthroplasties. And if you take patella tendon from the knee joint, you destroy this extension, extensor mechanism. You, you, the patella will be shortened, the patella tendon will be shortened. And then later in 10, 20, 30 years, the patient will get problems with this uh, injured patella. So, I really try to avoid patella tendon and uh, I go for every revision. My second um, choice is quadriceps tendon. And you, we have got very nice techniques using all those tight rope systems and from other companies also. So you can really take quadriceps tendon without any bony defect and you can make revisions very nicely with quadriceps tendon. And you don't shorten the patella tendon. You don't have this problem with uh, patella baja. You don't have the, the other problem with, with uh, uh, it's, it's a very nice graph. Uh, so, so that's what I wanted to mention. And uh, third, okay, bioabsorbable screws in revision. It's always, always a point because, you know, why we have got tunnel widening, we have got bad biology in the bone. If you place there a bioabsorbable screw, so you got for, for the absorption process, you will get acidity. So for the healing, it's not optimal. So uh, also in revisions, I, I, I went years ago, I went to, to uh, not to use bioabsorbable screws for, for revisions. So if you use one, you can take titanium. It is better biologically, as we noted from other operations, titanium is good. Bone can heal on titanium. And, uh, or you use all those, uh, all those retro buttons and button systems outside the, the joint. So uh, you don't have any, any dis disturbance inside the tunnel, which is, kind of problem in our revisions. I think they are very, very valid points uh, coming out of your experience. Thank you very much for uh, sharing these points, Dr. Martinik. There are a couple of questions I would like to ask you. Uh, Dr. Martinik, what, is, uh, what percentage of your revision ACL reconstruction patients need two stage revision? And what are your indications in your experience? Indeed, as I already told you in this discussion, most of the cases are malplaced tunnels. So I think like 10% of my revisions are two-stage procedures and 90% can be performed uh, in one operation because the tunnels are far away or really far away from, uh, from the optimal place. Secondly, I, I try to leave the metal there. 
you know, we deserve school. So, so a bioobservable school, I will remove it. Or there is some 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 staple, or if there is some titanium screw, I leave it because I don't create a new defect. And if you really can place your tunnel perfectly anatomically, leaving the old hardware, so you have got one problem less because you don't have, you don't create this this, this defect there, and you just uh, place your new tunnel. So 90% one stage, 10% two stages, and. Uh, Oh, that was already well well uh, reported. You know, you, you have to wait three months, four months, five months uh, to to get uh, to the second operation because the bone needs some time, and uh, it's uh, you have got time. The patient says, uh, and, and if it is not a professional soccer player, you can really you have to explain patient be be uh, compliant, um, stay with us. We, we take time, and you will get a good knee. For, for long term time. Okay, uh, Dr. Martinik, uh, a very basic question. Suppose um, you feel the tunnel is not in the ideal position, the previous tunnel is not in the ideal position and it's away, and uh, how far a distance is okay for you for one, hamstring graft revision, ACL reconstruction, and two, uh, screw fixation for a, a quadriceps graft or Whichever. How far away, if the previous tunnel, uh, I mean, what are the distance from the previous tunnel which you consider is safe enough for a single stage revision ACL reconstruction? It depends not only on, on the distance of the tunnel. If, uh, if it is a few millimeters, you, you, will, get, you will get better, uh, bigger tunnel. And then you have to, yeah, you can use some bone grafts and uh, you, you can just enlarge the original male place tunnel into the right position and then position your graph. So this is only, I think the question is more when I do I decide for second stage and two stage. So I think if I've got double tunnel uh, um, defect, I decide to go for for two stage procedure because the, the defect is then very, very large. And if it is less than double tunnel, like 1.6, 1.7 centimeters, so you can try to get bigger, bigger tendon but it's extended, you can really get it very, very large and then use some, some bone graphs, which are very popular to, to really use only one operation. Okay, wonderful. Um, um, have you operated on uh, infected failed primary ACL reconstructions? And uh, how would you proceed with the- I, I try, if you have got a, uh, a, a infection, very um, post-operative infection, like in, in four weeks um, following the operation, I try to save it. I try to, I, in my in my uh, um, hospital, I use uh, extra articular fixation with uh, retro buttons, so I've got no material inside the tunnels. So if I get infection, like in, in the first four weeks after the operation, I, I try to save because this infection, if it is not a very aggressive um, um, uh, bacterium, so you can save it and. Indeed, if, if you get good healing, so they are really good. Uh, they heal very good because this infection is also kind of a healing process, accelerated healing process. So I, I go and I make two, uh, minimum two of better three uh, atoscopic debridement of, of the entire joint, try to save. And if you have a late infection, you have to remove it. It's uh, similar to atroplastic. If you have a late infection, like after six months or nine months, you have to remove it. And, and then go for a second stage. And um, do you have any specific uh, protocol? For example, how long do you want to put the patient on antibiotic yeah. when you would like to proceed with the revision ACL reconstruction? So it's similar to arthroplasty. We go for uh, 14 days, two weeks, IV antibiotics. Uh, and then we put them on for six weeks on oral antibiotics. And after, after this time, if the inflammatory uh, signs went down, if the infectious if factors uh, uh, um, uh, went down, so you can go for revision. I, I wouldn't go after six weeks, but uh, I would go after three months. So it's about six weeks under barrel, extend wait six weeks, if everything stays stable, and then you can go for revision. But I think IV antibiotics are very important uh, because the infection is sitting in the bone, most many, in many of those cases. And uh, if you only take <coughs> antibiotics, they don't, don't get to the infection to the bone. So that's what we learned from arthroplasties. Two weeks IV antibiotics. So we have to keep the patients in, in patients. So it's, it's, it's expensive. You know, you have to keep them in the hospital. And, uh, but it, it, is, it is worth 
because if you save uh, save the knee and if you save the graph, it's good. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much for your points, and I do agree with your uh, statement that uh, the most of the infected ACLs can be conserved, can be preserved. We did have a session on infected ACL reconstructions, and uh, we had a discussion on a couple of research papers which have uh, confirmed what exactly you said. That is, uh, uh, most of nine, more than ninety percent of the ACL infections can very well be preserved. That is something that um, all the youngsters should know. Uh, Dr. Srinivas Um yeah, you, you made a point related to uh, Muslims with respect to ACL reconstructions and the choice of graft. Can you please repeat it? So, sorry. So, so um, I... uh, with respect to people who practice Islam, you made a point with respect to Muslim patients with respect to the gra choice of the graft. Can yeah, you just the main thing the... is... Uh, uh... When, when it comes to Islam, this thing is but a bone, uh, particular bone tendon, bone, bone tendon, bone graft. What happens is uh, they will have post-operative pain. That is the one thing. The second thing is uh, if you use the quadriceps, this thing, in the kneeling, kneeling is the one thing yeah. because in Islam, what they do is a uh, uh, kneeling position. So, which will be troublesome for their uh, religious activities. So in those patients, it's better is to go for a isolated quadriceps. We have to explain that also will create a little bit of discomfort, but not like the bone tendon bone graft. In that you can use the contralateral hamstring grafts. You can use it or peroneus longus. You can use the peroneus longus. Um, some nowadays they are using the tendo actually also nowadays. But when it comes to the sports, uh, this thing, the one issue is. Uh, the laxity of the ligaments is the one issue nowadays because uh, the may most common in the football player, rugby player, football players, rugby and these thing, hockey players, their ligaments and uh, the um, jumping sprinters, the ligaments will be a little bit lax. The knee ligaments will be lax. When you come, if you do the primary ACL also, if you see the thing, sometimes we doubt that uh, uh, this knee looks like a stiff knee, whereas the other normal knee looks like a lax knee. Because the ligaments will be a little bit relaxed when it comes to the operative knee. So when it comes to Islam, what I told is better to prevent the bone tendon bone graft. It's because for the religious activities. Okay. Dr. Martinik, what is your opinion? Do uh, you agree with uh, uh, the choice of quadriceps and uh, hamstring? Yes. Yes. I, I would okay. even, I would even in, in those patients, if they are not high-end athletes, I would go for hamstring control of the side. Uh, because for those people who really pray every day and, and have to knee, and if you injure the extensor mechanism, mm, mm, kind of uh, taking patellar tendon out of yep. a biceps tendon, so you will harm it and they will have discomfort. Yep. I think hamstrings, as you know, they, they are really, it's very, very, very evasive. You can take it with small incision, uh, very, with less trauma. Uh, I think uh, hamstrings would be uh, good for, for, general population which are which are not high end athletes and for high end athletes i would go for participants yeah okay Dr. martinik with respect to revision acl reconstructions how frequently do you do a extra articular tenodesis do you prefer that for every patient of revision acl reconstruction or similar to a primary acl reconstruction you choose your patient based on increasing uh, rotational instability ALL reconstruction, which we call it right uh, right now in the last years, um, is is uh, it's very difficult to decide. You know, you have to look at a knee, jo knee joint and knee if there's rotational instability. And um, I'm not a friend of extra articular pr procedures, but uh, in some cases with, with very gross uh, instability, you have to do it. Um, so this is really a very personal decision. I do it like in five percent of my cases only. And you have to look at the, at the knee joint, you know, how is the rotational stability. And I, I rather go inside, and I probably you saw this method, if you have got high, uh, high noon position with ACL, so you can uh, reconstruct this posterior, uh, posterior medial bundle intra-articularly, place it, uh, take it with an anchor, with a tape, and make this rotation st insta uh, stabilization, rotation stabilization inside the knee joint, otoscopically. 
But ALS is a sure issue in, in revision, sure. Especially of those who you perform ACL, they are not satisfied. They, they report about pain and kind of instability. So you have to go for it. Okay, wonderful. Dr. Srinivas, you can go ahead with your questions. Thank you, Dr. Mokhati. The uh, presentation was Thank very good. Thank you very much. Um, and I have a few questions to Dr. Martinek and then uh, uh, Dr. Mokhati. Uh, Dr. Martinek, the ALL, uh, you said, what technique do you do for ALL reconstruction and what percentage of your revisions uh, do you need uh, to do the ALL? I already mentioned it's like 5 to 10% only. Um, because most of the cases, the, the patients are really they place tunnels, so they don't have this this gross um, uh, uh, instability, inst uh, rotational instability. So I I use it I use it primarily with with the tape, with the tape and anchors. Okay. Like okay. described by my company, I, I work together with Artrex, which is minimally invasive. You don't have to harvest uh, additional uh, tendons because every tendon you take out of the knee joint will cause another harm, another injury, another kind of instability. So um, these tapes are quite, work quite good. So we can really make this anterolateral stabilization with tapes. Posterolateral, I use graft, I use graft and M strings. And the uh, last procedures and, and, and those of the operations, so this is not good for tape, but anterolateral is tape quite good. And uh, I understand uh, for revision, your graft uh, of choice is hamstrings as well. Uh, either number one, quadriceps. My order is uh, first is uh, quadriceps, second is contralateral, hamstrings, and, and, and third is patellar tendon, ipsilateral. Okay. And what are your uh, choices of fixation on the femoral side and on the tibial side? I use the tightrope system. This uh, newly developed uh, title system now. Um, in the past, I had a um, bone, uh, bone uh, tendon graft from the quadriceps, and I stopped uh, taking the bone out. I do only only tendon part, and you can both uh, in, include in the tightrope system, or you take a, a small bone chip from the uh, upper part of the patella, and then you, you take interstellar screw. Uh, um, best case in, in my eyes is titanium interference screws on the Proxima side, and you 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 use a kind of, of a retro button or button extra articular fixation on the tibial side. If the uh, if the uh, if the defect is large, so you take some bone graft. Yeah, in some cases, if you you know if you don't have the possibility, you can take also a screw there to to get good uh, good fill of, of the tunnel. And uh, uh, do you do notch plasty at all? If yes, what percentage do you require usually for only, if it, only if it is necessary. You have to look at the at the notch. You you place your graft and then you you move the knee joint. If you see as a, if uh, if chronic instabilities, you got some osteophytes osteophytes toward the notch. You have to remove them. So the graft should be really good have good run inside the notch. Shouldn't have any impingement because. Uh, every impingement will cause elongation or, or an injury of the new graft and will cause instability or, or uh, failure again. And uh, Moparthi, what percentage of cases do you do uh, notchplasty? Notchplasty is uh, what I do is uh, whenever I do my ACL reconstruction, primary ACL reconstruction, whenever I finish my tunnels, what I do is uh, just uh, I'll finish my tunnels first. Then what I'll do is I'll slide my ethibone tape. Ethibone tape and I will see how much of uh, this thing is going. Is there any associated uh, impingement onto the lateral side is there or what? Means in extension, we can slide it and we can see with the scope, the flexion and extension, how much of the, this thing is there. If after the graft, if you feel sometimes what happens is when we see in orthoscopically the notch, it looks like a, it's obliterate. It's, uh, sorry, it looks very wide. But when we keep the graph in little bit, little obese thighs, and this was the body mass is index, you go to the graph size of nine like that. Sometimes there'll be lateral side mild uh, impingement will be there sometimes if you keep it anatomical also. At that time, what we can do is just take a 5 mm osteotome and just uh, make, make a small uh, nibble of that lateral edge and shave it off smooth with a shaver. So 
So again, see in extension. Then you can see there won't be any impingement or attrition of the graft there. So, what, what approximately what percentage of cases? Uh, very, very less, very, very less, very less. Okay. And uh, for, uh, uh, say, uh, big tunnels, uh, and you want to fill the tunnels uh, and do a two stage, what is your uh, bone graft of child choice? Yeah, here I won't get any dowels like that, what I told the technique by father. What we can do is we can use the hollow mills. The hollow mills will be there with the different sizes of hollow mills. You just open up the iliac crest. Can, you can drill it off like this, the directions, how they are used to take the bone tubes. Drill it off, just uh, lift it off and fill it off. Something like this. Proximal tibia, is there any... Uh... Use. Yeah, proximal TBA we can use it, but again, what happens is uh, already one side is injured knee uh, going for ACL. The contrast side, if you take me second, he complains of pain. The most scenario that's what I'm telling the patient confidence and the counseling is the one of the issues. He says, My doctor has came for this side surgery, he has created some holes in the opposite knee, and post operatively, if there is pain in that also, that I'm now I am not able to move about. So better is safe area is better to take the iliac press. They have got plenty of iliac press. Both wings of iliac press are there. Professor Martin, what, what is your choice uh, for the source of graft? The iliac press. This, the best of, of, this is the, of the best uh, biological options. I know it, it can hurt. It, it hurts the patient. Some is more than me. But I think it's uh, yeah, we have got revision ACL. So this is not just a small operation. And you should choose the optimum. So. In those, those little cases we have, I, I go for a little first. Small incision, you can really get it. Also, with like with old instruments, you know, you can use these uh, harvesters for osteochondral graft, and you can do it minimally invasive and they get a good, soft, good uh, um, healthy issue, uh, tissue from the bone. Uh, Professor Martinek, just one more uh, question. Um, in your experience uh, from revision ACLs, what do you feel are the good prognostic factors for good results for ACL and poor prognostic factors for, um, for, for the res poor results of the ACL reconstru revision reconstruction? Think. What, what factors you feel um, the patient has, they will have a good result and uh, some factors that can lead to poor results? I have to definitely factors which lead to bad results are already secondary damage. Lots of meniscus, cartilage defects. So, you know, this is, uh, this is additional instability. The, the patient lost half of his medial meniscus has already uh, cartilage defects there. So they, they have a little bit less chance to, to get a good result. And if, if the cartilage is still good, the meniscus is still good. So uh, there's no reason why uh, the ACI shouldn't get better. So that's, that's the discussion we have every since many years. You know, should we perform ACI reconstruction? And there are still some surgeons worldwide. We say you can do it conservatively, but you know, you you, you got the patients ten years later with secondary damage, with uh, loss of meniscus, with cartilage defects, and those will not get good results because uh, they are it's too late. You know, so the better the conditions, the better the results. Mokparthi, what, what do you think of the yeah, this? Main problem is uh, why the iliac crest, as Professor Martinek told, is good incorporation. See, when we make the tunnel, the tunnel length, that thing, we can't take from the TBL, as you told, uh, because that much of graph, we have to fill it up. We have to fill that void completely. That is possible only with the iliac crest, but not with the, uh, to take from the opposite uh, TV and this thing, we can't make it because mm -hmm. that's such a large defects. The patient will have post operatively will have pain and stress fractures in the articular surfaces. Sure. Because when there is a because every patient they change in the biomechanically. Some will have a normal mechanics in the knee, some will have doesn't have normal mechanics, normal biomechanics in the knee. Some will have a good slope uh, will be there, the tibial slope will be good, some doesn't have a good tibial slope. Based on that, also the patient outcomes also depends in the surgeries. So iliac press this is good because the length of the graph, you can take adequately, we can pack it, we can squeeze it into, you can completely fill it off. You can, like we can say, throw it into completely. 
and we can wait so it will heal but we can't do with this uh, tibia this thing that is the one thing and second thing nowadays is uh, uh, i think martin professor martinik should tell the inside in technique is nowadays is better sometimes if there is a failure in the primary acl the tunnel will be that there won't be any ballooning of the tunnels as we see with the screw fixations like with the hybrid fixation because femoral side there won't be that much of ballooning if you want to use screw if femoral side we are using the endobatal loop and tibial side we are using the screw like titanium or biabsorbable screws sometimes there will be ballooning of the tunnel but with the inside in technique if there is any failure because with the inside in technique is the problem is only with the um, bungy jump effects bungy jump effects and wind wiper effects so the length of the graft how much we are taking the tensioning of the graft that is the main thing in the doing the primary acls so inside in technique sometimes if there failure the revisions will have good uh, the, the revision rate in inside in techniques is good when you go for the revision because there won't be that much of ballooning of the tunnels we can fill that gap if there is any associated infections we can fill it up with those tunnels with a good small amount of grafts also the diameter of the, the graft will be very less compared to other methods or if you are using the suture pose for far cortex suture pose and this thing these are the good thing instead of uh, using the bio screws or titanium screws the like that i think professor martinic should say tell is uh, is a professor you should okay. tell Dr. Mopati, what, is how... opinion, what is opinion on uh, inside in technique uh, after the patient is going for the revision acl professor might have seen in his uh, clinic so many cases with, with uh, in, uh, after inside in technique coming for the revisions acls previous lord said done inside in technique surgery is coming to his clinic to uh, going for revisions what is your uh, experience professor martinic For, for inside, with, with, in, with inside in technique coming for the revisions. Yeah. All inside ACLs. And uh, what what I I don't understand uh, completely what you mean with inserting okay. technique. Yeah. All inside. Yeah. All inside. The question is uh, whether the all revision inside. rates are um, lower for all inside primary versus uh, hybrid primary. I think so. So that's what I see. I I do this uh, for four or five years now. All inside. And this is all those uh, problems with with um, with uh, elasticity of the graft and of the of those ropes and and what what we used in the past. You don't have it because on the femoral side it's just tightened completely. And as you know, we do it. We insert it dry, compressed inside the tunnel, and it it is this is very very tight. And you know, the tendon is around 360 degrees around the bone can heal very fast, and there is no For bungy effect, and on the TBR side might be a little bit bungy effect, but if it is placed um, um, correctly, you have got no, uh, you you don't have um, any any uh, any um, forces there which will loosen it. So it's very important the tunnels are placed anatomically, and then you don't have those uh, those uh, those uh, forces which will disturb your healing. I think all inside. I I like it very much. So all companies uh, started to do in, all inside now, and this is I think a very nice method. Not only for the insertion, also for the placement, because you have got. We we discussed it four weeks ago, was it? And in the session, so we yes. we discussed this all inside technique. Yeah, yeah. I think we had a very beautiful discussion on all inside ACL reconstruction with Dr. Deepan Menon and Dr. Martinik. That was a very good discussion. I think Dr. Martinik has discussed the, these uh, points. The that would be a good reference. Dr. Mopati, I would like to, for completion's sake, you were talking about iliac crest bone grafting for revision ACL reconstruction. I just wanted to ask whether uh, do you drill the uh, tunnel to the maximum size and take an equal size of Uh, uh, graft, graft cylinder from the iliac crest, or you just take a smaller graft cylinder from the iliac crest and impact in, into whatever gap is there in the tibia or femur. Um, uh, what I does is because I till now I did one revision ACL. Uh, to say frankly, uh, that is one is infected case that is, uh, and the other one is is uh, revision two revisions that is one is the infection. whatever is that infected case that was done with the inside in technique only the patient the fifth post of day he developed some signs of infection so i took to ot immediately removed the graft i kept the tunnel dry and, and for six months is a sports athlete is a, a 
athlete is under 18 is playing uh, cricket so i waited for 6 months in between he is a medical student and he is uh, my exam going that is exam going is one advantage which has given me a favorable to my side because in medical profession handling another doctor who is studying in medical is a very tough job so he understood the condition then after 6 months what i did is uh, the tunnel was dry the same tunnel i used again because inside in technique we'll, both ends will use the loops only because there won't be any graph. the tunnel was good i took the ct it was very good again i went for the fresh i widened little bit 2 mm i widened it it was very good bleeding then i re uh, grafted with the anatomical position that is one case the second case is uh, i i got the case is there is a ballooning of the tunnel what i did is iliac crest whatever i measured the length how much is there because what happened is uh, if the tunnel is uh, is a 45 mm the tunnel or 50 mm the tunnel is there we will drill only up to 30 mm 30 mm length only we will drill it the remaining will be the narrow it will be endobutton rimmer only will be there so what happens is uh, we can take the 30 mm we can, we can take the measuring drill bits will be there or we can make a, just a measurement of your drill bit just under arthroscopic uh, visual and we can just keep a straight artery just you bring it back and you drill one k wire into the iliac crest up to same length k wire into the iliac crest then use the hollow mill then you along with the hollow mill you can drill the uh, iliac crest then you just wobble it off uh, you can get the graft with the k wire inside and this thing you can push keep that uh, k wire with the graft directly under arthroscopy visualization uh, into the uh, tunnel just freshen the tunnel of 1 mm or 2 mm whatever the fibrous tissue will be there it will go off then we will, will get a bleeding area then you fix it inside just with some small angled bone punch or this thing just hold it and remove the k wire and fix it uh, inside with the angled okay. punch you can tap it it will be inside yes dr sasi yeah. i am sorry but i have got a next webinar yeah it, yeah you uh, told me started and um I, I'm really apologize that I have to, uh, no. to go out of this very interesting session, but the people no. from the other side are already contacted. We are me. closing it. So thank you, thank you very much for the very yeah, nice yeah. Uh, Nick, thank talk you, thank you for discussion. Us. Thank you very and much. I, I hope we will see each other very soon to other ob objects. Thank you very yes, much. Yes, we are going to meet soon. Thank you very much for joining uh, us. It was a pleasure. Thank see you, you soon. Bye-bye. Dr. Martinek, thanks for coming. Okay, so no, 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 you understood what I told is how because we don't have that bone dolls or this thing, just is hollow mills are in there. different sizes, hollow mills will be available. So we can drill it, uh, yeah. with that hollow mills and we can make which, it. Uh, which part of idea crest do you take the the, the main thing is the prominent part that is uh, the correctly from uh, the middle, the middle prominent part where there will be more of the uh, bone stock will be available. Um, there we can make it out from that is from the uh, you can say is uh, uh, five centimeters uh, around seven centimeters from the ASS. Seven centimeters from the ASS, that is the most prominent part where can we can get a good amount of a chunk of graft with a good diameter. That is really the ideal position. What if you do don't you have hollow mill, we can do one thing is just drill, uh, make, make it a circular with one mm drill bit, just uh, drill it. Just to take it directly, the bone goes and hit it, make it uh, take a big, little bit big chunk, trim it off like into a cylinder stock and uh, just keep a cover, keep it inside and push it off. That is the one thing we can do is... What do you think is the maximum length and diameter you can get? Maximum will be, we can go is up to is, um, you can say is uh, 35, 35 mm. 35 mm is the idea. That is, we can say, that's the um, usual three, length we can three, three, three centimeters, uh, three centimeters. And uh, in your in your presentation, you showed a technique to hold the bone graft, the cylinder in the tunnel, isn't it? Yeah. So, is there any other technique, or uh, you you, you best is that? the threaded best is uh, that is the other method they shown is best is the threaded cover is the ideal thing. If there is a threaded K wire, we can just drill it, we can hold because threaded K wires will be holds very well because it holds a threaded portion. You can just put it inside, just uh, press it with the bone angle, bone bow, and pull it out. 
under with your assistant will be showing the arthroscopic view this is the best view uh, you, you leave that ky wire inside no no it will come off it will come off we can we can we can pull it out because uh, in medial portal it will be directly visualized yeah. we can visualize from the medial portal directly so bring the scope into the lateral portal anterior lateral portal you keep the bone graft front visualization through anterior medial portal flex the knee put it inside make it a, um, on the infrapatella tendon make a anterior incision incision for another this thing just in that place you just make a small incision and keep a space just send a small gouge will be there bone gouges there will be different different sizes just for angled one it will go and hook it like this or with your uh, uh, the long artery curved uh, artery forceps long one way which we use in abdominal surgeries just hold it it will hold like this then you from the anterior medial portal this one will be in the infrapatella portal okay this uh, uh, artery forceps you pull out from the anterior medial portal the ky wire the lateral portal your assistant will be showing okay so how do you retain the the cylinder inside the tunnel you just punch a little bit inside for up to 2 to 3 mm so just so if yeah. you take the cylinder slightly uh, bigger press than fit. the little bit press fit press fit graft press fit this is the thing okay else? i think uh, no no i think it was a wonderful discussion we discussed a lot of practical issues in uh, revision acl reconstruction thank you very much it was a, a very good presentation and discussion also and dr martnak also uh, shared a lot of his knowledge thank you dr shrinivas mupathi thank you for dr shrinivas kamavati especially thank you and uh, shrinivas for giving me this opportunity and yeah, we hope to see you sometime soon yeah sure thank you thank you thank you very much thank you for the talk thanks okay, okay. take care bye